So since we're doing a YZ250 versus YZ295 video, y'all are going to have to pay real close attention to like the way that it sounds, the way it runs, the way that they accelerate, because there's really not much of a difference between these. It's very, very subtle. I will say that Bond is a steel frame and his is a aluminum frame, so that means he's got the 48 mil forks. And, um, those definitely did make a uh, big difference. I'm definitely going to be looking to upgrade to some 48 mils at some point in the future if I end up keeping this bike. But besides that, the only differences are he's got a recluse and I got a girl. Oh yeah, I will say it's worth mentioning he does have the Shinko fatty front tire, which is bigger than the front tire. I got, I got a Dunlop in MX3S on there, so... That tire actually does soak up some of the terrain. It kind of acts as a little extra suspension. Definitely going to get that tire for my next front. Take note of how I just barely gave it any gas to get the front end up over that little rock ledge and lift right back there. Also take note of this little uh, root that across the trail. Right there, how I just barely gave it a and it just cleans it. So I actually cleaned that last little rock section back there in second gear. I uh, didn't ride this section on the 250, but I'm, I bet you I could ride it in second. I know the recluse would help slip it, but I just don't know if it have as much grunt. Same shit we just started on. What's going on? Oh shit, fucking busted a hose. Damn, broke my radiator, I think. What? What? We're going back to the truck? probably tell right there I wasn't actually planning on doing a YZ250 versus YZ295 video out of this I was just kind of you know, taping just for fun but um me and my friend Taylor figured while my other friends were fixing the KTM we'd switch bikes and that's how I got the idea to so that last little section with that turn I just did really shows the versatility of the 300 motor you can ring it out or you can just run it out, whichever you prefer. All in all, on the 295, 
I gotta say, you just don't really have to give it that much throttle to do what you want to do. And sometimes it's a good thing, and sometimes it'll just wear you out. So, keep that in mind. Take the old 250 for a spin. Y'all enjoy the ride. Do keep in mind he has the gnarly pipe for his expansion chamber and he's got a shorty silencer on there. He's also got his head milled down for a little extra compression. So right there is when I realized, whoa, this thing lights up real quick. And of course you saw me kind of hop the two little obstacles at the beginning. A little low end grunt. So it does have some grunt, just not as much as the 300. Right in that RPM range, right back there, that's where this bike sings. back there and uh, yeah that's why I just kind of bogged out I figured maybe the recluse would help me out but uh, it just didn't help me out quite enough <laughs> what you think it's fun man it's definitely got some power it wheelies easier than that thing yeah I noticed this one you kind of gotta you kind of gotta put your like arms into it more to get it up yeah or pick up is easy. yeah sometimes it feels like it like over wheelies you're like holy shit I didn't mean to go this high like, but dude, this thing, it's way different, but it's like the same, you know what I mean? Yeah, it feels totally, this bike feels totally different. Yeah. I think, like, you know, my bars are set differently. Yeah. Dude, you need to move this in a little bit, or at least for my hand. Yeah. Like, you see how I moved mine in to where I can grab further out on the lever instead of in the little lip? Yeah. That's what I had to do in order to get good stopping power out of that thing. Oh. But, um... Dude, it's, it's got power on the low end, but it's still like a 250 when you get up and it's like, let's go. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. I'm glad you like it, man. Yeah, it's it's way different. Mine's, mine's it's like, it's just like, let's go right off the bottom and it kind of like slows down in the middle. Yeah. And then you can just grab another gear and like, you're just like, whoop, whoop, whoop. And this one's like, whoop. <laughs> Let's roll through some trail for a minute. All right, let's roll some of that single track we just hit. All right. Yeah, bump start it. Oh, not, not enough speed. <laughs> She's coughing, sneezing. False neutral, man. I don't know what is up with the Yamaha YZ 250s, but it happens all the time. <laughs> Right back there when it's what? that's when it's like the power valves open and it's like hitting right into the power band. And that's what's a little different about the 250 and the 285 I will say is the 250 it seems like it takes it a little bit longer for the power valve to open it for it really to get into the power band whereas on my bike on the 295 it's just like almost relentless like right off the bottom. It's whop, whop. That landing right back there that's where i really noticed his front forks i didn't really say anything about it in the video but i'm saying something about it now they're a lot better than mine 46 mil forks are just old school technology i really that's like one of the main issues with my bike and i'm definitely thinking that the shinko fatty front tire might help a little bit just cushion some of the blow Take note of the motor RPM revs going up the hill. Here we go, wall, wall, wall. My back tire wasn't slipping and my wrist didn't move. That was just the recluse. I just, I can't get used to those things, man. This is where I kind of blip, blip, and I thought I was going to get way more because I'm used to the 
295, and I didn't get anything at all and about go over the handlebars. <laughs> that route back there it's like I'm just not used to it yet I guess I'm used to where I don't have to give it a whole lot this one just got to give it a little bit more to kind of get it where I want it least. it's not used to it keep going yeah I struggle to control this thing huh I struggle to control this thing you want this back yeah I almost went over the bars oh, on that rock ledge. I hit it and I was, I'm used to like, ah! and like nothing happened. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Dude, I, I like it though. It's fun. It's got the power. Oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Yeah, it's got the power. It's got, got it. the power. All the power you could ever want. I guess part of it is I'm not used to using a clutch. Yeah, dude, I like started grabbing for the clutch. I was like, wait a minute, I don't have to do that. Like, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> but I did notice, like, I was one fingering it the whole time. Like, that was it's that not was bad. Not. I like the Magura for real. I like one finger it or like I like one and a half, two finger it. Yeah, I'll just like kind of grab for it. And it's there. Yeah, I gotta get used. I stalled a couple times. I figured well, I didn't hear you behind me when I was about to do a little hill climb with that log across it. Yeah, I didn't hear you behind me. I was like, he must have stalled it back there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not used to that clutch. Yep. <laughs> Dude, that makes it a lot easier though. I'm not gonna lie. But like when I was coming up the hill, it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Cause it was like modulating the clutch for me. I was like, when is it gonna hook good? Like what's going on? Yeah, see that bothers me sometimes. I'm like, come on, like. Like that's, that's this one, you know, it's in gear. Like it's not like giving you a false like clutch, like engagement. Like yeah. it's plugging if you're got the throttle on and you're in gear. Yeah, it's getting it. Yeah, sometimes I wonder if it slips the clutch too much. Maybe we should head back though and see yeah. how they're coming along. I don't even know. I think we got it. You just want to turn around and do the single track backwards again? Alright. Alright. So yeah, in case y'all didn't catch that earlier in the video, my friend Jacob ran his radiator right to that stump and um that's kind of why we ended up switching bikes and messing around for a little bit, making this video possible, basically. So thanks Jacob. <laughs> And um, we actually got back at about the exact same time that they got his bike finished, so it was perfect time. And there you go, no I didn't take the Nancy line this time. right back in that last section how this motor just eats in the low rpm just blah, blah. that's really if you're ever thinking about doing a 295 kit and you just really need that extra low lug i would suggest it but i mean honestly sometimes i feel like it just tires me out more than i get to use that extra 50 cc's so i don't even really know what to tell y'all for real i love my bike i wouldn't trade it for anything i might sell it eventually and get a newer bike but I like it for what it is right now. It gets the job done. There's everything I want to do. I can do some trialsy stuff. I can do some cross country Good stuff. Way. It just it does everything, and that's the one thing that I wanted out of my dirt bike. I wanted to be able to do everything. I can ride tracks, I can ride single track. I can do everything. So thinking about it on the fence. It's I mean it's up to you, man. It's a personal preference. I bought my bike with 300 kid already in it, so. I was kind of stuck with it, and I don't think I'm going to downsize or anything, but overall, I'd say it's an awesome bike. I don't think it would do you wrong by any means. So if you're thinking about it, just ask yourself, do you want a little bit more power? Do you want the low end run? If your answer is yes, go for it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. As always, Dirt Bike Buddy out. That was fun.